Um, the girl in white was um, Futsuhime, I believe, and the girl in green was Tochiko no Yatsume, or that's at least who they're thought to be. Various historical figures on the Oscar theory. Shonoku's notable because he introduced a lot of legal reforms, a lot of people considered, you know, really kind of like. The Jap Jap Japan didn't become a single nation until like 800 years later, but a lot of people consider that like one of the really first legal landmarks in what eventually became the Japanese Empire. Uh, Z is not going to pass things. This is, this is not the game. Um, the game on the whole is fairly easy. It's a good starting point for a new player. It's a lot more forgiving than some of the other games. Like you could start with something like the subterranean enemy if you hate yourself. Um, you can start with UFO if you hate yourself a lot. Especially if you're colorblind. Yeah. Oh my god. It took me two years to beat that game on easy mode because of freaking colorblindness. Th that game has a gimmick where you need to be able to tell red from green. If you can't tell red from green... You're in real trouble. Too bad. Alright. The series by the numbers. Main series has um, 14 games. Two of them are head-to-head -head shooters, like if you play Twinkle Star Sprites or um, things like that. Where instead of having one person at the bottom shooting various bosses, you um, have one person over here, one person over here, shooting at stuff that's coming, and every time you destroy something, it makes it worse to the other pair person, so it's like, no you, the game. <laughs> there's four fighting games. Um, there's one freezing shooter, which is instead of uh, dodging the bullets, you just turn them all into ice, because you, can, you don't have time for dodging. That's that. Dodging is for chumps. We had two photography games where you go around this Aya, who someone shouted earlier, who has a camera and she's literally shooting the bullets by taking pictures of them and making them go away that way. There's also um, a breakout style game we don't talk about because it never existed. There's <laughs> seven comic series. Um, there's a couple storybooks. I don't know um, if you could remember all the names of all of them off the top of your head because I can never keep track of all of them. Well, that's one of the seven, yes. Um, there's several art books, five, um, and 28 music CDs, because the point of Toho is to give you something to do while you're listening to really good music. You might as well dodge bullets while you're listening to great music. And when this was made, this was made about a month ago, there were 154 characters on the Toho wiki, and they range from, most of them are the little girls you saw there. Um, there are some other things, there's a tree that's a character, there's a turtle, um, there's... There's a giant catfish, yes. There's some weird conglomeration of five eyeballs connected by various bolts of electricity. There's five magic stones that are the five best characters in the series, and so on and so forth. Huh. Alright, story time with Zoom. This is where I think we best talk about this sort of stuff. Okay, so um, obviously, as you can see, there's not a lot of in text text or in-game text in these games. So um, Zune does helpfully, however, release a text file that comes with the game that basically says, oh, and here's five pages of backstory that explain why you care, you know, really explain what's going on in the game because you can't, you can only fit so much in a couple lines of text. Um, and so in order to expand on the world of Toho, uh, Zune's also released a bunch of printed side material which discusses various characters and incidents and places within Gensokyo. Um, so, kind of as we alluded to before, with how a lot of the Ten Desires characters are based on, you know, 700 AD era Japanese historical figures, Zune draws a lot from history, mythology, and I'm at this point convinced pretty much whatever he's just interested in and reading at the time. Um, he once remarked that he, he pays rent not so much uh, to give himself a place to live, but as storage for all of his books. Um, so a lot of his characters, you know, draw very heavily on various mythological or historical themes, not necessarily limited to Japan, but there's been a lot more focus on kind of the Eastern, well, the Eastern, um, Japan and Central, and East, Southeast Central Asia um, over the last few games since he started developing um, characters based on various religious traditions in that region. And so, like I said before, everybody has a backstory ranging from a few sentences to literally a few pages of text that explain what they are, who they are, what their role in the story is, assuming they have one. Because a lot of the early, early stage characters are just some poor chump that the main character happened to run into on the way to wherever they were going, and... Sorry! And... 
the nice, one of the interesting things about Toho is even though Zune provides a fair amount of backstory for a character, he doesn't like write a novel about all of them. So there's a lot of gaps that you can, you know, fill in there that are there to be filled in. And filled in they are very often and by very many people in many different ways, from comics to fan novels to whatever you can think of. And <laughs> yes, there's 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 also a lot of comics with characters kissing other characters because that's what fans do. Um, but one of the one of the um, more substantial <laughs> uh, examples of what students done with character backstory is uh, a few years ago that like an official public like a real comics publisher uh, did a what they called a mixed media Toho series, and so they had a comic drawn by one of the more well-known uh, fan artists that was kind of the main storyline. They had another, uh, you know, previously fan artist do a four-panel series, which was basically um, Rayson and Tay's fun, fun, rabbit punishment time, the Gap <laughs> comic. Um, and then they also did a, every three months, they would publish uh, basically a short story written by Zoom that kind of explained what was going on behind the scenes in the main storyline to kind of make, fill in the details. Um, I think one of Zoon's strengths in storytelling is being able to take a lot of, uh, explain a story not by just like sitting there and writing pages and pages of, you know, what the hill that they looked like while they were having lunch in, in three different dead languages, but he's really good at, um, you know, putting together a lot of really small but interesting details that shed a lot of insight about, you know, how things are going. So like in Cajun Lunatic Renegade, the first volume was, well, in the comic it's like, oh no, bad stuff is happening on the moon. And so volume one of this is uh, adding one of the um, last bosses from Toho Game 8, and also as it happens, previously a really important figure on the moon kind of explaining what she thought was happening with lunar politics. Then you have, you know, a few volumes later, you have Kaguya, um, her shut-in housemate. Uh, Princess Kaguya from the actual, you know, Japanese fairy tale. Um, basically writing what it's like to be her and trying to find purpose in a life where she's never going to die. Uh, the next volume explains kind of why Mako hates Kaguya so much and explains how she came to be immortal. And uh, the next comic, is, or the chapter, is Yukari talking about various things because she also has a role to play in the story and so on. And so it's, you know, not big epic texts, but it's just, you know, here more details that make the story interesting and more significant. All right, uh, before we go on to the man behind the games, actually, we, uh, we did say at the very beginning the best way to understand Toho is to experience it for yourself. And you had that opportunity this weekend, as Henry will now describe to you. Okay, folks. So, in the neighboring room, the video games room, immediately off to your right, you will see a very large station. That is a station of six machines. They have, well, I should say five of them, have all of the games. And I do mean all of the games. One of the biggest things about when you get up here, we can talk to you to death about video games. But you don't actually get to touch them, you don't even get to taste them, you don't get to experience them for yourself. Well, in this case, I highly say do experience it. Try it for yourself. Uh, myself and uh, Scott here, uh, we have actually built, rebuilt and or put together uh, six computers for you guys to try them. They are fully stocked. Use them, have fun, ask questions. There are quite a few of us here that have played this or played these games for quite some time. We know how to play them. We know how to have fun with them. And most of all, we want you to try them. Um, you can, it's, it's best experience firsthand. And unlike all the previous other panels that I've ever done here, I actually get to say this. You can buy them right here at Anime Boston. There are no less than three dealers downstairs in the room, in the, uh, um, thank you, dealer's room, uh, where you can actually buy all these games. Go in there, buy them, 
Even run from the main entrance, take a right. There's one right there, there's one at the back. Find them, try them, enjoy them, please. Because guess what? That's what they're there for. They're games and have fun. But please don't actually taste them. We don't want you to get sick. <laughs> Alright, so you want to talk about Zoo as well? Or? So, another one of the things that makes Toho interesting is that the series is basically executed entirely by one man. Um, it started as a side project of his when he was in college and said, you know, there really aren't any shooting games that have Shrine Maidens in them. I kind of want to make one. And as it happened, he was a member of his college's game uh, makers club, so he did. And the first five games were uh, for basically the old Japanese DOS-like PC-98 platform, and then with uh, Scarlet Double, he jumped to Windows. But, um, you know, most of the work is done by him with, you know, occasionally assistance from programming, uh, from especially the PC-98 days from some of his classmates and stuff like that, but really almost all of the work in the games is done by Zune himself, except for the fighting games. Um, <laughs> so yes, literally, uh, you know, all of the sprites, all of the music, all of the art, um, anything that appears or is audible on the screen is done by Zune. Um, 